What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to be taking a look at a super tiny single board computer that could replace your underpowered Raspberry Pi Zero or Zero W. This is known as the Banana Pi M20. Same form factor as the Raspberry Pi Zero, but we do have some more power on tap with this little board. The M20 does come with a higher price tag, but it's not by much. The original Raspberry Pi Zero was marketed as a $5 single board computer. Then they came out with the Zero W, which was a $10 single board computer. And if you tried to scoop a couple up online when they were first released, they were going anywhere from $15 to $30. The Banana Pi sits between $15 and $30. It really depends on where you get it. On eBay, they're $15. You can also find them for $28 there. But if you want to get prime shipping and everything like that, it's going to be around 30 so I'm going to leave links to Amazon and eBay in the description. I think $15 is a good deal for this board. So like I mentioned, the M2 is the same form factor as the Raspberry Pi. Now it doesn't have the exact same layout on the board itself, but SD card, micro USB, and HDMI do line up exactly where the Pi Zero sits. So it'd be really easy to replace a Raspberry Pi Zero with the M20 in whatever project you're working on. The Raspberry Pi Zero has a single core CPU at one gigahertz, but when we move over to the Zero M2, we get an all winner H2 Plus. This is a quad core Cortex A7 CPU at one gigahertz. It can be overclocked 1.2, but you will need some cooling on this little board. For the GPU, we have the Mali 400 MP2 at 600 megahertz. Now this is an older GPU, but it does great with a lot of retro games. 512 megabytes of RAM, just like the Raspberry Pi Zero, but instead of DDR2, we have DDR3 in the M20. As for I.O., we have a micro SD card slot, mini HDMI, micro USB for power in, micro USB 2.0 OTG, a power and reset button are built onto the board, 40 pin GPIO layout, just like the Raspberry Pi 3, CSI camera connector, built in Wi-Fi 802.11bgn, so we can't pick up that 5 gigahertz network, but I think it's fine for a small board like this. Plus, we have built in Bluetooth 4.0. There's also a lot of different operating systems available for this board, like Android, Raspbian, Ubuntu, and Retro Orange Pi, which I'm going to be testing out in this video. This is not going to be a replacement for the Raspberry Pi 2, the Raspberry Pi 3, or the 3B+, but it could replace the Raspberry Pi 0 or 0W. So I've installed Retro Orange Pi on a 32GB SD card. I also have a micro USB to full size USB adapter here and a mini HDMI to full size HDMI adapter so I can hook this up to my game capture and monitor. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get right into it. So here we are with Retro Orange Pi. I have done a few videos in the past on different Orange Pi boards, and if you're not familiar with Retro Orange Pi, it's basically Retro Pi for the Orange Pi boards. Since some of the Orange Pi and Banana Pi boards share the same CPU, they ported it over to some of the Banana Pi units. And by the way, I did add my own box art, but if you use the built-in scraper, it's going to get nice screenshots that'll fit perfectly inside of the box. So in this video, I wanted to test out some emulators that really struggle on the Raspberry Pi Zero. We're going to see how much more power this thing really has for emulation. Now if you've ever messed around with the Raspberry Pi Zero in emulation and check the FPS while you're playing SNES games, it's not at 60 FPS constantly. Trust me, you can turn it on in the Retro Arch menu and check it from there. So the first emulator I'm going to test is PS1. I'm not sure how well it's going to perform here, but we're going to be going with Bloody Roar 2, which is a harder one to emulate. Then we'll move on to some easier PS1 games. FPS is listed in the lower left hand corner and as you can see and hear, we're not at full speed with Bloody Roar 2. We're going to move over to another PS1 game to see what we can do because Bloody Roar 2 has given me trouble on lower end arm chips in the past. And again, it looks like Tekken 3 is a little too much for this board. I'm using PC SX Rearm, it's the LR core. But when we move over to Crash Bandicoot 2, we're getting full speed emulation. So there are some PS1 games that are going to run at full speed on the M20. I know it's a stretch, but I still wanted to test out some N64 emulation on this little board because I know I'm going to have a lot of people asking. This is GoldenEye 007, and it's a little too much for this hardware. But when we move over to Mario 64, we're getting full speed emulation. So it looks like some of the easier games to emulate with N64 will work on the M20.
Neo Geo performance is great on this hardware. So here's SNES, this is Hagani. On the Raspberry Pi Zero or Zero W, this runs at about 52 to 54 FPS constantly through this whole level. But it looks like the Banana Pi M20 can handle SNES emulation really well. This thing shouldn't have any issues with Genesis or Mega Drive. And finally, we have Game Boy Advance. Now this really struggles on the Raspberry Pi Zero and I know a lot of people want Game Boy Advance on their handhelds they build. I'm still seeing some frame drops here and there, but it's much better than the Raspberry Pi Zero is. If we could get a 200 megahertz overclock bringing this to 1.2 gigahertz, I think we'd be fine with GBA. So Retro Orange Pi is built on top of Armbian, and before I even installed Retro Orange Pi, I installed the standalone version of Armbian for the Banana Pi M20, and performance was much better than I thought it would be. We are limited by that 512 megabytes of RAM, but Armbian has some really awesome memory management built in, so it kind of makes up for it if you're using this operating system. But personally, I feel that running a desktop operating system on this little board is a little too much. So overall, the Banana Pi M20 performs pretty well with retro gaming. Now, as for power consumption, idle is on par with the Raspberry Pi Zero W at 240 milliamps. Now, this is sitting idle with Wi-Fi on, but when we move over to gaming, it's a different story. We're pulling a little over half an amp with the M20, so note that if you're using this in a battery-powered device, your battery will drain faster than it would if you're using a Pi Zero. I will have at least one more video coming up on this. I'm going to look into overclocking. I want to get this to at least 1.2 gigahertz and see if we can get smooth gameplay in Game Boy Advance. If there's anything else you want to see running on the M20, let me know in the comments below. I'm also going to leave links to eBay and Amazon if you're interested in purchasing one. It would also be really cool if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, but like always, thanks for watching.